All right, welcome to another round of the Coaches Show. Again, head coach Brent Holting and the voice of the Greenbacks, Austin McNorton. Thanks for joining me, guys. Always appreciate it. Uh, these ones aren't nearly as fun as the ones coming no. off of a win. No, they are not. But it's bound to happen. And uh, coming off of a 41-20 to 20 loss last week at Holcomb, moves the Greenbacks to 5-2. and two. What uh, What's the overall thoughts of the game before we kind of get into some of the details? You know, uh, you know our kids played hard, and and we knew coming in that against a team like that, as athletic as they are and stuff, that we weren't going to have a big margin for error, and so we had to execute really well. And and like I said, our kids played hard. We just didn't execute real well in key areas, and and you know we were close to them total yardage wise, but it, it's amazing. You know, you take away three or four plays, um, you know, the ball game's completely different. Unfortunately, you can't take away three or four plays. You know, they had happened to make the big plays when they needed to. And, uh, you know, we're, we're learning experience for our kids, I think, and you bounce back and, and try to correct your mistakes this week. You know, you always hear coaches say you, you it's a learning experience, it's an opportunity to grow. How specifically have you seen in this week of practice specifically saying, okay, even in just a short amount of time, how have we grown already from it? I, well, I think the first thing we did, you know, like we went back in the last couple of days, we've talked about um, run fits, um, both offensively and defensively. And I thought offensively especially is where we had a big problem with that. Um, you know, and talking to some of our kids, like one of them said today, I almost feel like I ran the offense better early because – I knew who I was supposed to go to and nothing else. And they're like, now I feel like I knew I'm supposed to go to, but then I see other stuff happen and I think, man, I better go help over there mm. instead of just doing your job. And, and we've really been preaching that to the kids the last few weeks is do your job. If someone else doesn't, then, then let us correct that, but don't try to do their job. And cause I thought we had a lot of that the other night that the kids weren't quite doing their job or they were reading into something, thought they saw something instead of just going where they're supposed to go following who they're supposed to follow, and and then that gets us in trouble because our offense is really execution-based. We get a lot of guys at the point of attack, and, and which is a good thing, except for when they go to the wrong guy, then all of a sudden we're, we're completely missing assignments. And then defensively, coverage-wise, obviously we had some new people. You know, the injury to Johnny early mm. kind of threw us for a loop, um, and we had some new people in positions, but uh, we just had a lot of miscommunication there. You know, we've really worked this week on communicating better, understanding what coverage we're in, um, even just the little fundamental stuff, understanding, hey, if they're way faster than you, you got to open your hips quicker. You know, you may have to, <laughs> to give the five-yard outs a little bit, uh, things like that. So I think we're just working on trying to be the best we can be. You know, this week, obviously, Nickerson, chance to, you know, senior night, chance to clinch the CKL league mm -hmm. at home. Um, I, I told them t this week's about us, working on us, getting better at what we do. Is that need, you know, when you said players think, you know, wanting to do more or trying to do more than, is that from putting more wrinkles in the offense and there's, it's more complex or is that just from the mindset of this is a big game and I, I want to try to do more? No, I mean, our base plays, we haven't put any wrinkles since the beginning. Um, really, so what this offense does, and we'll walk through it a little bit uh, later, I think, is our kids actually make the calls at the line we i make the call but then they make the calls on most plays some plays i do from the sideline but some um they make a call depending on how they line up in the front and and the the beauty and the curse of that is they make the call get us in the right call so no matter what front they run or what they have we can block it and we have good blocking angles when we block it um but but the the downside of that sometimes can be if we're calling it on the fly someone doesn't hear the call someone miscommunicates or or uh, forgets the call because uh, because with every play we have several blocking schemes built in um, and so I, I think it's just a matter of kids wanting to win wanting to do a little too much and, and thinking man if I do that it'll be good instead of saying okay let me do my job and trust my teammates to do theirs every single play does you mentioned the injury to Johnny early on in the game and you mentioned the fact that several other players had to step up in different positions. Do you feel like this team has quite a bit of depth and does a game like that give you a lot of excitement for next season and seasons to follow to say, man, we got kids that are playing pretty well and they're sophomores? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think we definitely have more depth than we've had in, in my time here this year. Um, unfortunately, where we've our depth has been severely tested is in the back seven and and we don't have as much there. And I think we have a lot up front. Um, we don't have as much. But, yeah, kids are stepping up. You know, Grayson Mandel's 
had to start the last three games for us. Uh, you know, step up or mm -hmm. two games, and and then we'll start this week. Obviously, um, <laughs> I think those kids are growing and learning, and I think when you can play younger, uh, can only get, reap benefits as we go on. You know, further and further down the road. You know, making adjustments. You'd mentioned one of the things I noticed was even in that game, we outscored Holcomb fourteen to thirteen in the second half. And in both our losses, then and same thing against Cheney, outscored them eight to six in the second half. What, what's that correlate? Does that correlation have anything to halftime adjustments? Or I hope so. I'd like to think so. Um, yeah, I think sometimes, like I said, we got a bunch of good kids who want to do well, and sometimes they almost overhype themselves. And and by that I mean, you know, they they want to be so perfect that that we don't understand. Like, look, you're never going to be perfect in a football game. No one's ever played. Mm -hmm. Heck, we've never coached a perfect football game. We're all going to make mistakes. Just learn from them on the fly. Um, but don't don't change your whole routine. And then also I think what halftime gives us a chance to do, especially with this offense, is go in and see how are they playing us, um, how are they lining up technique-wise, You know, what are they doing, are they stunting, coming in and out uh, with their ends. And so then a – we can we can do a couple changes on the fly with how we block things if we have to, and then also gives me an idea. You know, when I can settle down at halftime and actually watch a little bit of end zone view and stuff with our with our sideline kit and figure out what they're doing and and hopefully make play calls adjusting based on that. Yeah, going into I don't know if you want to get into some of the plays now yeah. uh, from last week. A couple big plays there. I mean, we had Carson with the big pick six. Enoch started the game off strong with some. Power running really yeah. carried it all the way through the game. We mentioned it all game long about uh, just how hard he was running and kind of kind of yeah, one of those so, games that. So yeah, what do we got here? This okay, so this uh, is the play. This I is think the new uh, five plays for me. Yeah, the new the new, the new addition, uh, addition to yeah, sponsored by Legends Pub and Grill, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Kerry East. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So yeah, we get a chance to uh, kind of throw some plays up on the screen and yeah, have you so, break them down for us. So what what are we looking okay, at here? So this first one here. Um, we, we had a call. We were going all out. We like to go all out a lot of times when they go five wide. This was third and 17, obviously, third and 18, first play, first and it, drive of the game. Yeah, start the game off. Yeah. We have them right where we want them, pick up Felt a couple good. negative plays on defense and yeah. looking at a third uh, and 17. So so we had uh, uh, a double backer blitz here. Um, we, were, we were slanting our D-line in um, and have backers coming off the edge. And and with the problem with that is when they go five wide, um, it's not a problem. One of them has to – Check, check the blitz off, and and so when they line up right here, they got the trips, they got the three receivers. So right now it's max. Well, um, our kids uh, usually bump over to coverage, so max bumps over when they go in motion here, and it and even more confusing for our kids. This is new. They motion the number two receiver um, instead of the number three, which is sometimes a little easier. So when they motion um, the the two receiver, here's the problem. Our kids. Um, that, that kind of confused them on choices. Does Max stay on three? Um, but what we really want is Max to bump in. We want De uh, Dalton to come down and cover number two because um, he's our safety there. We've got man-on-man -man at the top, and then Max just bumps the guy over to the inside guy to Kirell um, over there, and then Kirell picks up motion and man-to-man. -man. And so now it's a five-man blitz instead of a six, and then Sam's a spy on the QB. And so what happens is is we go in motion. We had some miscommunication. Dalton thinks he's going to stay, um, which he's probably right. Uh, Kirell thought he was blitzing because he already was and, and didn't get out of the blitz. And so Dalton didn't come over, and both of our backers blitz when they're five wide. Um, we can't do that. We almost get there. Um, and if you see, one of the things we talked to our kids about this week, if you look at the end zone view um, – you know, Carson's stuck there, no man's land, because he can't cover both. If you look at the end zone view, you know, we've talked to our kids about when you blitz, you got to go, like you're shot out of a cannon. And and I think just a little bit of hesitation there, if you watch the play, we hesitate, and we still almost get to him. It was we, close. If we go, yeah. yeah, I think if we go full speed, we get to him, and he doesn't get the pass off. And that's why we like to go blitz. We tell our kids, you know, we go we go all out man-to-man. -man. you got to cover strong, not long, because we're, we're sending heat. We're not going to go man-to-man -man just to go. We're sending a lot of heat with it. Uh, we send six. That's more than they can block. They only got five to block. So we know we're going to get there. Um, it's just the way that they presented it. Uh, we got confused because really we should have had Sam bump over, Kirell bump out, Max going, and and then we're good to go. Instead, they both go. Now you can see they're they're both uh, getting in. I don't know what's going on with the 
the audio. Oh, it's not. It's stuck. It's frozen. Oh, frozen on our new Ooh. segment of the show, yeah. and we get a frozen feed. We are. We are frozen. Hit your space bar. See if that'll kick it in. Nothing. <laughs> oh, this new technology is horrible. New technology is frozen. Man, we were ready to line up for a great so new segment. <laughs> Brent had us so prepped and ready for this this play. Let's see if we can pull it up again. Let's see if we can do it the again. The anticipation here. to actually see I that know. play play out. It was it you. was great. Oh, okay, oh, there we, we moved on. We to the, is that the end zone yeah, view? This is the, the same end zone play? View, so, okay, here we so go. So what we see is is they go in motion. See, we don't bump. Max bumps in and knows he's going to blitz, but Kirell doesn't. At the last second, Dalton says, oh, shoot, I better get over there, which, you know, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul because now number 40 is going to be open. But, uh, you know, we go on the blitz. You can see right here they're both coming free, but but we got to go a little faster. Yep, they were. They and had and the we lanes. almost got there. Uh, you know, we almost get there, and, and we didn't quite get there, and unfortunately, you know, it led to a big play. Yeah. So so what does a play like that do? And I saw immediately afterwards, after they kicked the extra point, you go over and you high-five your players and keep the energy up. In a play so early on in the game like that where you're saying, man, we got all the momentum, we got them right where we want them, third and 17, boom, they're up eight. How do you keep the momentum and, and positivity on the sideline after such a play where you're just like, oh. Well, realize there's a lot of game left. I mean, there was there was ten minutes ten minutes left in the first quarter. At that point, there's a lot of game left, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing we tell our kids: you're not going to win every battle in a game. They're they're trying to make plays. They're practicing, to make plays all week too. And that's a really good football team. Um, and so you're not going to make every play, uh, but you got to make your share of plays. You know, you you got to keep making them, and you got to keep fighting and grinding. You know, and we always kind of say it's it's a war every Friday night. Win enough battles, and you win the war. Um, and I think we actually won more battles than they did. If you look at it was you know, a lot of just if you big take plays. away their top four mm -hmm. plays and our top four plays to make it even, we outgain them by a ton. They they unfortunately right. just hit the really really big plays and and that's the way football goes. And and you know I thought we outplayed them the majority of the night, but it doesn't look like that on the scoreboard because they hit the big plays and, and we unfortunately didn't hit any really big plays. Yeah, they did. All right, moving forward, what do we? And if you're listening to this and not watching the video, if you're listening on whatever. Spotify or iTunes. Uh, okay, we're on we've got we've got now. a video board up here that we're kind of going over some plays. Yeah. So for anybody out there listening, so we're on offense now. Probably easiest view is the the end zone view on this one. You know, we shifted, we moved early in the game because I always want to see are, are they going to. There's a couple guys in this offense. We always say we want to attack, and and so we want to see if what they're doing defensively are they going to move? Or are they just going to bump mm -hmm. over? You know, so are we going to end up attacking weak or strong a lot? Um, is usually what we say in terms of how they're lining up. And so this has been a pretty popular lineup against us. Um, you can see what they did was they actually brought over a shade. Um, they brought over their backside tackle almost straight up on our center. So we had some action. And, and they left a couple gaps open backside, which is why counter I thought was there uh, all night. They, they had their defensive end right outside of Grant there on the weak side, you know, our tight end. And then number two was walked up, and he played some games. He, uh, him and 12. Um, played some games with their strong side DN. They would they would switch in or or smoke out, and they played some games there. Um, so the first look though we we get is uh, what we call this is a recently newer play. We call it four T, um, and it's it's just our ISO play except for instead of Trevor running it, we actually have him lead block along with Mason. And so what we want on this play is uh, we're going to call uh, a hole. Um, depending on what look they give us, we, we can we can hit the ISO in any one of three holes. Um, and and we're going to call the best fit and, and hit the hole here. Um, here I think he calls, uh, you know, we have Alpha Bama Charlie. He calls Bama. And so This is the first yeah. round of the game. This is first the, the big run. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, we don't quite fit it up right. Uh, actually, I think we called, uh, sorry, looking back at it, we called uh, Alpha here, and we quite shouldn't have. If you see... We should have called Bama here, which I think the line d does run Bama, um, and they're blocking down. You see Liam blocked down right here. Um, he blocks down. We want Mason to come through, and he's going to come through, play side to number five, and then Trevor's supposed to come through to number 40. Now, we don't have anyone for 24, but you know we'll live with getting to the safety every play, right. now, except for that safety was really, really good. Well, he was, so, but he took a beating here. He did. So, so now, we, what we do, though, Maui does such a great job, if you see a, a clearing, and and so does uh, Liam with him, our strong guard, you know, and then Brock, Brock sealed off 76 here, the three-tech. You know, Brock seals him off right here, 
and and then they seal that off. That lane was open, but they drive him so far. This is just such a great job by Liam Maui. They open up two gaps, and and so then uh, in um, excuse me, Mason takes four like he's supposed to. Trevor comes over and takes five, and and we got a nice little gain. Now we're not going to get to that. You know, number twenty is their backside corner. We're not going to get to him on this play. It's a quick hitter, and we're not going to get. We want Jay Air to come down here, um, right up here. His goal, and he's he's just got to take a little better angle as tight as twenty four was playing. We want him to get to safety because that's when the home runs happen. Uh, we had that happen if you remember Carson with Hoisington right. early in the season. Yeah, when our X can get the get to safety, that's when that's when we can hit the big plays. If he can't, then we hit the six, seven, eight yard plays, which are great too. Yeah. Um, so Jair kind of takes an outside path there. We want him to take a little narrower path if we could. Um, you know, obviously you see Drake, everyone else has get, got great blocks there. Um, safety gets in, he knocked, you know, <laughs> nice, powerful run. What a hit. Comes through and uh, uh, finishes the run, and I think we got a 12-yard gain there. Yeah, that's who we ended up. That was the first play of the game, and I, I wrote it down in the booth thinking that could be the hit of the game already. The way he put that safety on his back, that we might not see a yeah. bigger hit than that. We didn't, that I remember. <laughs> so – so this one um, is, and, and unfortunately, the second play, this is when Johnny gets hurt. Uh, yeah, but know, another big play. Big I mean, play, we reeled yeah, it off early. 12 yard, 20 yards, and yeah, thinking, right. and then you see Johnny still laying on the field, and yeah, it's like, oh, that's a tough. Bit of wind um, comes out of the sails there for everybody. So, so this is our counter play, and, and our kids will tell you, you know, it's a counter. We have a ton of different ways to run counter. It's, it's our most diverse play because it's kind of our home run play, you know, and it has been right, this year. Right. Um, and so counter, we, we, can, we can block it on the front side uh, four different ways. And on the back side, we have, I think, six different combinations that we can pull um, in be, between the guards, the tackles, and the blocking back and the fullback and, and everybody else. We have a bunch of different combos the way we can run it. Um, we know that most teams are going to key on Mason, um, our blocking back when they play us. He takes you to most plays. Um, you know, he's kind of a glorified offensive lineman. So a lot of times early on in games, um, what we want to do is get those linebackers to reading the wrong thing. And we want them not to trust their keys. You know, their coaches are telling them all week, hey, read Mason. He's going to take you to every play. So what we want to do early is send Mason the wrong way on a couple of them. Normally he comes back across and, and we fit this. We call it tic-tac-toe, but, you know, in an order, three in a row, that's what we want here because we pull at least three every time. And if you see here, um, you know, Grant makes the call on this play um, where he's coming down, um, depending on if 14's outside of him, inside of him, and, and where everyone is, we make a call. And whether he can handle him individually or Mason needs – or, excuse me, Easton back here needs to help him. Well, this play, Easton doesn't help him. Um, this play is called seven wrong. And so we come down. Grant comes down. Now, the one thing we do is, is Grant's coming down pretty hard. Our, our pull path is not quite right here because grant makes the call liam normally kicks out that defensive end he's pulling here and liam does a great job of this all night but when liam's pulling here um he thinks i think originally he's got the dn whereas since that dn comes inside of grant grant takes him so liam tries to turn it up and kind of gets into grant but liam does an excellent job of changing direction and getting out to two the overhang which if 14 crosses grant's face that's who we're going to kick and so wrong here tells Mason he's going to hip tap Drake. Drake's our other puller. Um, he's the last guy through the hole. Uh, Mason's going to hip tap Drake and take any backside filler. Uh, we got and and you normally that's the fullback that's doing that. Trevor. So now Trevor's coming over and he's the middle guy in the pull. Liam's going to kick. Trevor's wrapping up, looking outside, and then we want the Johnny's hand on Drake right behind him, and we want Johnny hiding behind that big body, and Drake's looking inside for the for the the first first uh different colored jersey so liam does a good job of adjusting kicking um we see drake get a little wide here and and what we see here is trevor should be going to to since we kicked that trevor should be going to 20 uh, is what we should have going and Keyshawn here is coming across he's trying to get to safety as well 24 um and what you see here Keyshawn makes a great effort but he overruns 24 where really if he turns right here and gets 24 which is what we want him to do. Then we lead up to 20. Now Drake comes through and he gets a little wide, but he sees 20. Um, and and our, our biggest issue here, we talked about those communications, like Trevor, he plays his butt off, but he turns into, he sees this guy that, that Grant is down blocking there, if you see it, and Trevor tries to turn into him, even though that guy's already blocked. 
Um, so we should have Drake coming inside, and he should be going right now to safety. 24 right okay. here. Okay. Uh, this guy right here. And then Trevor should be on 20, and that's a touchdown. Right? That's what we should want. the safety. Right. Out, right. So Keyshawn, and then Keyshawn, we, I mean, we want to double on the safety because that's our home run. He kind of overruns 24 of the safety here and goes to the backside corner. Uh, Johnny does a good job of cutting off Drake because that's his job. He's going to trust Drake every play. You see him following Drake. Drake goes out. Johnny cuts. Now, you can see if, if, if Keyshawn could have turned and saw that guy, we got a touchdown. Yep. Um, or if Keyshawn would have got him back here, Trevor comes through. Right? So – so I think we had a lot of these. We're really, really close to a big, big play, and we just, just a little. It's not lack mm. of effort, just a little bit of, once again, trying to do someone else's job, but, but still a big play. And, and unfortunately, it comes through, and, and this kid kind of spins Johnny at the end and 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 gets his ankle pretty good. Yeah, unfortunate to see uh, Johnny go down after yeah, that big run and big first play. And I'm not gonna lie, you said so many words there: hip check or seven wrong, and all kinds of things that <laughs> you lost me at at the first one of those. Holy cow! There's just so much more into yeah. this offense. I don't think people really truly understand. Sure. And how much of it is like I didn't know until just now. How much of the kids are making the decisions out there on yeah. the field? That's so, what's really intuitive so for me. What what Grant could have done there. The other thing we could have done going back to that play. So Grant Grant took him down. The other thing we can do on that play, we tell him when to head up. We call we got a whale call, and instead of going down every play, because um, when they see that they usually squeeze. That's mm. what fourteen did whale call so then he'll instead of squeezing like he does every other time he'll he'll arc out to number two to pull that 14 out and then we kick and go back up inside of it too just a different way to you know quote unquote skin the cat we can pull like i said a bunch of different people uh we can double we can pull we can influence um a lot of different ways to run the same play um to to give them a different look so they don't think hey every time he comes down i squeeze because that's what's coming yeah right right and he can go in out and and then, we, then he can come down and squeeze, and then we got the nine play, which is a counter sweep where Easton will pull back around, hook, and we try to get outside with it. So, yeah. Right, what do we got coming up okay, here? This Next is big uh, play here on defense play. by Carson. So, yeah, game changer. I was telling Austin in the booth, a pick six is like a home run in baseball. Like, it completely changes yep. the atmosphere. It changes the energy. It changes the score. It just – it's huge. Great play by Carson. Now, Max, um, uh, what we see here, Max comes off the edge. Um, we, you know, we got a fire blitz. Max comes off the edge on trips. Um, Dalton rotates over. You know, Dalton's going to read the number three receiver. Carson actually bumped down since Max is coming to the flat here. So that this was kind of a disguise coverage. Generally, when we when we when they go to trips, uh, when they go to trips, we have Max up there in the flats, and we have um, Dalton here playing center field deep. Carson stays deep, and and then our corner stays deep. So we got a three deep setup. Uh, so what we did here is brought Max off the edge, off the motion of trips, and then ran Carson down to the flats instead of getting deep. Um, so I think their quarterback thought probably Max he was generally right. has the flats. And so we brought Max. Now his, his blitz path, Max blitzed hard. His blitz path was a little wrong, allowed him to get outside of us. But dropping Carson down there, um, you know, you see quarterback Carson come down. Quarterback didn't even see him. Carson does a great job of coming down. You see Dalton did a great job of coming over pattern matching number two. Um, you know, from from that middle middle safety position, you see number two. That's who he's reading is the number three receiver on that. And and Dalton pattern matches. Uh, Carson steps under, does a great job, and 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 gets a pick six. Yeah, that was that was a big play. Yeah, it was that huge. Was, play. It was huge. Great play. It kind of flipped the momentum there, and um, it's the same play, just different yeah. different angle. Yeah, different angle. You see yeah. that. You know, the one thing we want to do is stay outside with our DN. See Max, we kind yeah, of stay he out. Never, he wants to blitz him. to the outside shoulder here. Is what we want Max to do to keep him in the pocket, and sometimes we lot. But yeah, he never sees him at all. Right. Uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, confuse him, and that was a good play by our defense. Good play by Carson. Yeah, that 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 was good. Uh, do we got any more queued up or? Yeah, I think you you queued me up <clears throat> five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this was so this was the, the, so so this is the one. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it a little bit in the booth. This was a formation we hadn't seen before. It was a Trevor in the backfield by himself, and uh, yeah, two ran it two plays in a row. And I didn't know if if we were running yeah. something just to see something, kind well, of we, like okay, let's run this and see how they react, yes. mm -hmm. or um, trying to set something up for later set in the game. Up, both. Uh, but later both. on, okay. you know, you yeah. said, man, it was there. We just didn't hit it. Was, it was, and and so was the seven. The next play, we ran counter back to Grayson, the one back counter, 
And, and uh, one of those things too, we got to trust it. You know, like I said, Grayson ran really hard the other night, just yes. understanding that veteran thing and getting behind Drake and following it. Cause, cause it was a big play waiting to happen too. And you'll see that on this one. Um, you know, Trevor runs so dang hard. He, he, he runs so hard that sometimes, you know, I tell him all the time, you got to slow down and speed up, you know, uh, once again, this offense is execution based. There's a lot of different moving parts. You know, it, it may look simple, like we're running the same thing on the sidelines sometimes, but we're not. There's a lot of different things moving and, and, and moving parts. And so what we got here is is our power play. Six, uh, Drake Drake handles this call, and and uh, so he gets down here. He's making a call telling us how we're going to block it. Uh, we thought we'd go to this because I wanted to see how they would react spread. They were packing so many people in. Um, I wanted to see what they do spread. And, and what we liked about it is they, they spread out both outside backers, um, if you see here, and then their safety dropped back to nine, 10 yards, which um, it was hard for us when, when uh, Johnny went out, he started creeping up more and more because, you know, Johnny's our big speed threat. Yep. And, and he started creeping up. So, so we hit this play. Um, once again, there's a ton of, there's four different ways we block power. Um, according to their alignment. So Drake calls a tight call here is what we call that, which means he's coming down with Brock to handle that seven. They're in a seven and a tight nine. So what that tells Trevor um, is Mason's digging out right here. He's digging out this defensive end, and our path is right off Drake's butt, right inside, right inside Mason right here. And so okay. we actually do that really, really well. And then Grayson's going out to outside backer, and then we've got Easton backside pulling around for backer right and and these guys are taught to railroad down you know brock actually gets too much of a piece of him but he should be going down brock should be going right here easton wraps around right here and that's what we got um and actually it works out better than even we planned for us the outside backer overruns um and you see here so right, right. now um trevor's path should be right here he should be grabbing on easton and going right up and following easton because it's um, going to open up it's going to open yeah, up you can see it yeah because you know. um, they overrun and Drake actually does a great job. Him and Brock, what they decide to do, and, and then when we give him this leeway, instead of Brock railroading off, they actually block uh, double him to where Brock overtakes, and then Drake does a good job of passing off. Now where we make the mistake here is Trevor goes outside of the kick, and we really want to fit that up inside the kick. And what we see happen here is yeah, a nice that hole. big hole, and <laughs> Easton actually goes to the, to the safety. And, you know, you see Trevor right here. If Trevor were to cut up, underneath that you know it's a foot race to the end zone yeah. Uh, yeah and i don't know if we win it or lose it but i know it's a big play because easton actually gets to the safety you know you see this He's guy laid out the safety late, goodness but that's their that's their backside backer he wasn't getting there all the way over yeah he took you know that if kid we out. hit the hole yeah so you know like i said it, it's one of those things that you know you look Man. at it in the stands and we got we got uh, a gain of one and and then you look at it on film. That's and unbelievable. You say, yeah, and you, you see say, what was there. We're, no, that was interesting. We're really I'm glad close to hit yeah, hitting I'm, a big play, and that's just once again not Trevor. Trevor, great effort. We just not quite there um, in terms of reading, and and that's on me. Got to get him. Got to get him following and and getting up in there and and following the blocks because because we had some big plays there. We just. You know, just a tiny bit away, as you can see. Yeah. Now, was this a formation, uh, like we saw the jump pass, for example, one that you established over the course of last week? Or is no, this something been you've been working on? Year. Okay. We've been running it all year, just just kind of, uh, you know, waiting until we needed it or until we got a good look or or until they gave us something that we okay. didn't really like um, formationally or what they were doing defensively to try to change up their look. And and I think, I think the big thing is this offense hits so fast – what we really want to do is make them guess and think. And, and every once in a while, they're going to guess right. You know, I tell our kids, just keep chopping wood because then we're going to chunk them. As you can see there, you know, that, that guy tried to guess. He tried to hop outside real quick. And, and if we fit it up in, you know, it's a big play. And that's what's going to happen if they keep guessing. They're going to guess wrong, and we're going to hit them because it hits so quick, and, and we get north-south. Um, what we want to do, what my job is to do, is to, to make it to where they're guessing and thinking and not – instinctively reacting and flowing downhill because the the more we can make it to where they don't flow downhill uh the better off we're going to be mm -hmm. um because if they're waiting then then they're dead in this offense because we're going to get to them you know if you look at the hoisington game some of them when they started waiting and guessing because they didn't know who to read uh you know i know hoisington's coach told me the last time i talked to him at uh at the uh the scheduling meetings he was like yeah my kids came over after play five because them we knew we were real bland and, and didn't show any of our false poles and stuff like that against in our jamboree. And, 
I knew Zach was a good coach and would read our blocking back. And the first five or six plays that game, we sent the blocking back the wrong way. And he told me that his backers came over and said, you told us to read him and he's going the wrong way every time. He's not taking us to anything. And, and he said they didn't trust themselves the rest of the night. And that's what we want to do. Yeah. We want to get it to where they're not trusting themselves. So wow. they're slow trying to find the ball. And when they're watching the ball instead of reading their key, then we're going to be there before they can react. And that, that's the goal. Yeah. Uh, to kind of put a bow on last week and before we get into next week at Nickerson, what were the uh, award winners that we've been covering each week? Who got the hit stick from the game and <laughs> practice right. and well, all I, that? We – we we didn't think we executed enough. To get oh, you out. withheld. Oh. You, so you doubled up. One carried over. Yes. <laughs> we, you know, we talked about we we got to demand more of ourselves. You know, we don't just give give awards to give them. We got to earn them. Um, it's just I like we, that. Okay. So, so we 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 withheld those for this week. So I I, I hope we we give those out next week. I like that. I like that. All right, so this week coming up at Zerger, final scheduled home game of the season, unless some things change uh, with the playoff picture. But 35th meeting, I could be I, – that was some rough math as far as Nickerson goes, but I believe we're 25-9 and nine, uh, against Nickerson. Um, senior night, big week coming up. What do, we, what do we expect coming out of Nickerson and leading up to Friday night at Zerger? You know, we, t- we talked about this <coughs> – excuse me um, – at the beginning. You know, to me – you know, I understand we're, we're not where we want. We're five and two. You know, that's great. You know, we've had a great season so far, and I'm really proud of our kids. Obviously, we wanted to win those two we lost. And and now, that being said, those are two, you know, top five, top ten teams in 3A. Those are both really good mm-hmm. football teams. And, you know, and Holcomb's coach, he told, uh, you know, he coached with Coach Strong for a long time. They're real good friends. And he said, man, that team ain't what I've seen all year. He said, we played twice as good I've as we've ever played all I day. said, I thought Holcomb look, was better than Cheney and after that they game. Looked like I mean, it, not to it, they looked better get than back Cheney. into that game, but I thought it, and, you know, it's I was funny more impressed Cheney with coach, Holcomb than, the, than I was Cheney. Uh, you know, Cheney was good, coach told me was that was really their best impressed. game. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then I told our kids, you know, I said, guys, the blessing in that, and the, cur- the curse is, yeah, we're getting everybody's best shot. Right. The blessing is they're, they're, uh, you know, they're giving you the best shot because that means they know they have to to win. Um, and, and they know we're physical and they, that if they don't bring their physicality, that they're going to be in a lot of trouble. And so I said, that's, that's a good thing. That's a great thing. We want that, you know, and that brings out the best in us is what it's got to do. Uh, but no, I think this week, uh, you know, like I said, we've got a chance to clinch the CKL title. Uh, you know, like I said, I looked up in the gym. I think we've won two league titles since 2002. Um, so that's pretty special to me. Anytime you can win a league title, that's really special. Uh, you know, I told the kids, I think I, I have to tell myself that and enjoy it because I know, you know, my first four years as a head coach, we won a league title. And I guess I got the, you know, probably arrogant or whatever thinking, man, you know, this is kind of my birthright. We win league titles. <laughs> they're, they're easy. They're easy. Right. Yeah, right. And, and you realize they're not. And, and there's a lot of teams you talk to that, that haven't won one maybe ever or in a long time. You know, I was talking to a coaching buddy of mine, and he's at a school that's been open 20 years this week, and, and they've never had a winning season, much less won a league title. And so – so you start valuing how special it is and, and how hard it is because any given Friday night, half the teams in the state lose, you know, and we're five and two in a good spot. Our kids have earned the right to play for a league championship at home on senior night, and that's pretty dang special. You know, I told them tonight we want to go ring that bell and let the whole town of Pratt hear that we want a CKL title, and then that's something when they put put that up in the rafters that, that they can never take away from you. When you come back and, and visit and go in the gym 10, 20, 30 years from now, um, that's always going to be there, and and you will always have won that and earned that uh, league title. So they're a wide open offense. They like to throw a lot, run a little bit of counter. Um, they like to throw it deep. They trick plays that works if you yeah. have the athletes to do yes. it. Yeah. And then they've got a few athletes that can scare us. Uh, you know, I think like always, we gotta we gotta dominate up front. You know, we gotta dominate up front. Um, they have some tall, some some length out on the perimeter. Um, you know, they hit some big plays against, I don't you know, they hit a couple big plays against Holcomb. They, they, they hit some big plays at, you know, a couple 20 plus yard chunk plays against Cheney. They can hit you if you're not paying attention. So I think we really have to, to concentrate on, on, uh, being tough at the point of attack. Uh, I think we got to dominate up front and then offensively, you know, man, they, I'm gonna be honest, they run a lot of different things defensively. I don't, I, I don't know what their uh-huh. identity is sometimes, um, so I think mass gotta, confusion. Yeah. We, we got to <laughs> for them too. Sometimes, uh, we got to stick to what we do. I told them this is a week about making us better, you know, focusing on what we do because it doesn't matter what they do. We have rules built in that we can block it. It doesn't matter what they do. So stick to your rules and, and we'll be great, you know, and come out and, and play physical football and, and get going downhill and let's have some fun. 
How, how do you go about, and it looks like you have found some bulletin board material of saying, hey, look, we can go win a league, a league title tonight. How do you go about week in and week out saying we need to find some sort of mo- motivation for this game when you're playing against a winless team and next week you're potentially playing against the number one, number two team in the state based on what happens against Andale and Wichita Collegiate this Friday night? Right. Uh, you know, because you, you work all year round. If you think about football, you know, you know, no, no offense to any other sport, volleyball, basketball, any of those, they play a ton of games, mm. you know, and they, they, you know, volleyball may go, they played three games last night. You know, obviously you couldn't do that in football. Um, you only get nine guaranteed games, you know, nine games, 36 games in your high school career. Um, and to me, you, you know, we put in so much work, every, every sport does, but we only get to pay off nine times. And I think that's why football is such a great atmosphere, special because it doesn't happen as often. Um, and and so, uh, when you get nine games a year, I don't know why you'd overlook anybody or not come ready to play because you don't you don't get that many. Um, and so I've kind of approached it like that. Like every game is special. This one, this is the last guaranteed time. You know, Cody said it earlier that we're ever going to get to go to Zerger Field and suit up. Yeah, we, we, there's no guarantees from here on out. So this may be the last time you play in front of the fans, in front of a town that, that's amazingly supportive, um, the last time that, that you get to strap mm-hmm. up, uh, put that green jersey on, and walk out there as a greenback on, on Zerger Field and hopefully ring the bell. So I, I don't know, and, and we're playing for a league title, man. If we can't get up for that, I don't, I don't know what to do. Yeah, hey, going into senior night, uh, I want to – Kind of, I want to give a mention to all the seniors here, so bear with me while I name them no, off sure. and kind of Please ask uh, what they've meant to you. They've been with you for the first three years here. So uh, on the roster this year, seniors are Dalton Weber, Enoch Walton, Trevor Steinmates, Luis Orozco, Keyshawn Thompson, Mason Melcher, Jesus Ornelius, Hunter Teasley, Liam Primrose, Grant Uni, Fernando Fernandez, and Javen Teets. I hope I got all those pronunciation rights. But what a yeah, big night. I mean, I remember my last game as a senior, especially my last one at Zerger. I'm sure you remember your last football game as a high school yes, you know, yeah. senior. What In this class, you know, you've been here three years. They've been here from their sophomore, junior season, yeah. senior season with you. What, what does this senior class mean to you kind of as it – they, you kind of inherited them as you took this yeah. job. Um, you know, they're great kids. They mean a lot to me. Obviously, they've been instrumental in in turning things around um, and, and having the success we've had. And that's, I told them tonight, you know, you've earned the right to play in a big game like this. You know, and, and no matter who you're playing, being able to clinch a league title is a big game. You know, and, and you've earned the right to do that. Uh, I'm really proud of these kids. You know, we've got kids everywhere who have been a starter since my first year here to kids who, who play special teams this year. And, but this 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 class doesn't complain a whole lot. Um, they've worked really really hard in the weight room. You know that's one thing about them. And if you look at their totals, a lot of these kids power lift. Um, they work their tails off in the weight room, and that's that sets a culture. You know that right. sets something that goes beyond. And, and and you know we talk about what we do every what what I'll do Friday before the game. We'll bring kids in, and uh, every Friday before our last home game, and I've always done in my coaching career. Uh, we bring kids in and, and I have them go up and I have all the, all the teams sit there and listen to them. And we talk about, uh, you know, what being, uh, Pratt Greenback means to them, a Pratt Greenback football player. And then I have them, you know, if you give a piece of advice to to an classman, what would it be? You know, and it's, it's amazing. Um, and I've done that my whole, my whole coaching career, uh, head coaching career. And it's amazing to me when you listen to those kids, um, you know, our kids, even the last few years, or they didn't mention a state title or, or or all the league titles or playoffs. They talk about the bus rides home with their buddies or or something funny that happened in practice. Their best memory, you know. Um, and, and then they they you know sometimes it's hard for them because the heaviness of man. It's yeah the finale the finality yeah, I'm, of I'm it. I'm coming towards the end yeah. of my career. No matter what happens, there's not many games left. Um, but it's really special. It's always special to me to hear. Um, them talk about it and and you know we preach all the time like leave everything no matter if it's a locker room um a personal um personal interaction leave things better than you found them you know and and i think that's a heavy responsibility starting my first class they did that and 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 it's grown each successive class of of leaving the program in better shape than you found it you know and and passing the love of greenback football on passing um the ideals the culture being a good person doing the right thing um being being a person of integrity all of that stuff i I think it's our kids have done a great job with that um 
you know, I know they probably get tired of hearing me talk about it sometimes. Uh, but, but I think it's special. Those kids are special to me. You know, it's, it's always hard for me going up and hugging them senior night. And, and, uh, you know, I can be a, I, I know I can be a crotchety old man, um, you know, that, that chews on their butt, but it, man, it's hard to, to hold back tears a lot of times. Cause I don't care how many times you do it. Every class and, and every kid is special to you. Cause I don't care who you are playing football. It takes a commitment. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, a lot of bumps and bruises, playing through pain. Um, it's, it's special. You're one of the special few that choose to do that mm-hmm. at any school. And, and so those kids are always special to me. This group's really special. And, you know, I always tell them, you're, you're stuck with me for life. You know, I was talking to, to, to one of the kids that graduated last year today. We texted back and forth quite a bit. And, you know, I always tell them, just because I'm done coaching, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm done being in your life. You know, I'm always going to care about you. I'm always going to be there for you. Um, I'm always going to do everything I can. Now, and I tell them sometimes the only good thing about graduating seniors is, you know, I can go from being your coach to, to being your buddy. You know, and then I don't, I don't have to get on. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to, anymore. yeah. You know, chew your butt anymore about this and that. Now, now I can just enjoy the kind of person you are. Uh, and we got great kids. Um, we got great parents, and and so it's always a fun night, but a bittersweet night at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that that's fun. Those are well spoken words, and always good to hear. And now it's time to move on to the trivia section. I mean, we got <laughs> oh, we got we got to lighten it up a little bit yeah, after yeah. all that yeah. seriousness. So yeah. uh, no, I'm, I ain't gonna this, roast you too uh, hard. I, I've always, laid off. Ter- I know, I know, you've laid off, and that's why it terrifies me. No, I, you're just waiting for that big hitter to come. Yeah, I aren't am. You? Yeah. I am. It's like uh, you know, I'm 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 like the you know the Dodgers and Braves when when Bellinger hit the three run home run last night. I'm like, I'm like Braves fans just waiting for something bad to happen with two people on base. <laughs> no, no, nothing bad, nothing bad. We're just gonna test your test your Greenback knowledge here. Speaking a little bit of it, tradition in that we're gonna play on that. So we can't go without the intro music. So we're gonna go with sure. that first. It's time for How Well Do You Know Your Greenbacks? Greenbacks, greenbacks, how well do you know your greenbacks? All right, Coach Holting, Pratt hasn't always been green and gold. Coaches way back in the day, frustrated that many teams wore the same colors, decided to kind of go with a bold change and switch to the green and gold. Do you know the original color scheme for Pratt High? Oh, man, that is a great question. Wow. Um, same colors. I'm gonna say gonna be something like black and white. Red and white. Very Red. close. And again, these are unconfirmed stats, but I did as much Red digging as I could. Were Where, they called the greenbacks then? Um I, that's a good question. That's a good yeah. question. I don't I think they've always been the greenbacks. But they were red and white at one point, and then uh, I'm not sure which coach or what era decided that he was tired of red and white because that's what everybody wore. So decided to go with green and gold, and then the uh, and then the switch from Kelly green to forest green kind of happened. I know when when uh, you know that's a that was a budget switch of uh, they they went to where Kelly green was not a stock color anymore, and the prices of everything. Oh, so it was a special order or something it, like it that. It was a special for, order. So the I price, didn't realize that. Yeah, the price went through the roof, which is when they started rebranding and moving stuff towards forest green because it's a stock color versus oh, the Kelly green that was wow. special. And it is crazy how much more those special colors cost to order anything. Yet. Really? Yeah, I didn't realize goodness. that. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know crazy. uniform color was based on budget needs, but no. I figured all colors sense. were available. That's what happened. I, know I suppose everything is based on budget. Right. There's a lot of things, right? It makes sense. Right. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, Coach, Red we appreciate you sitting down with us. Looking forward to a big uh, senior night this Friday night against yeah. Nickerson, hosting at Zerger, and uh, see who we face going into next week after this game's wrapped up and moving into playoffs. But always a big chance to clinch a league title. Always good to make playoffs. That's too. right. That's right. So, no, we got another game after this. And uh, looking forward to chatting with you next week. Always appreciate it. Thanks, Brent. Thank you, guys. Thanks. All right. That'll do it.